What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Urban Outlaw. My name is Bobby, and we are going to be headed back to firearms in this video. First of all, if you're new, please hit that like and subscribe and share this video out if you found it helpful. So let's dive right into it. First and foremost, this channel is dedicated to fishing and firearms, two of my favorite passions. And hopefully with this video here, I can, uh, I can, um, help you avoid wasting some of your money on, uh, your first or your next, uh, used bolt action rifle. That is what we are going to be talking about today. So just from my years of experience in the buying in the used market, uh, I'm hopefully going to pass on some tips and tricks for you to help you avoid uh, a situation where you buy a firearm and it's not what you wanted it to be. And you end up uh, have it, having to take a loss on the on your purchase. So I'm going to do the best I can to help you avoid that. So let's jump right into this one. We're going to we have four pictures up here on the screen. We're going to talk about each of them. And by the end of it, hopefully you have learned a little bit of I uh, learned a, learned a little something so you can uh, you can walk into your local firearm shop or uh, when you're talking to your friends, you can uh, be able to uh, not waste your money and have some knowledge behind you. So here we go. First picture we're going to start off with is the gun is the picture of the two barrels, two different barrels here, barrel A and barrel B. Now, right off the bat, you can see that barrel B looks a lot better than barrel A. Barrel A has what we call pitting damage. Pitting, rust damage and carbon a lot of carbon buildup. Um if you so first and foremost, every bolt action rifle that you that uh, is on the market now, you have the ability, or I should say, not every 99.9% .9 of them, you can pull the bolt out of the bat out of the rear of the firearm. There's a button by the trigger on most of these models where you can push it in and you can pull the bolt completely out of the back of the rifle. So once you have removed the the bolt from the rifle, it will give you a clear. <clears throat> excuse me, guys clear line of sight from the bore out the muzzle you can see down the whole barrel so my advice to you would be pull the bolt out of the out of the rifle point it at a light preferably something bright a bright white light so you can get as much light as possible traveling down that barrel and look down the barrel from the bore to the muzzle all the way down it now if the inside of that barrel looks like the picture in uh Looks, looks like barrel A, I would advise you to either ask questions about it because that is uh, most of that is caused from negligence, basically sitting and not being fired forever or they fired it and never cleaned it. And what happens is, is rust starts to build up on the inside of that firearm and it will cause pitting because rust eats metal. Rust is not a rust is not your friend in the firearm world. It is not your friend. It does a lot of damage to uh, some very uh, these very costly investments that you that you make. So if the barrel looks like barrel A, I would advise you to either ask a lot of questions about it or uh, um, stay away from it altogether. Now barrel B is a different story. That is a very clean, very uh, uniform colored. Uh, barrel. The lancing grooves do not have any damage. You can tell that that barrel has been well maintained. If you look down the rifle and you see that that barrel looks like that, that's a good sign that whoever owned it last took very good care of it. So that is what you want to see. Barrel B is what you want to see the inside of that, that uh, rifle to look like. So let's move up top here to the pitcher with the bolt in its locked position and the safety and the firing, the silver firing pin visible as well. So let's talk about that next. Now, every bolt action rifle, there is a spot on the rifle where the bolt and handle lock down into place. So first, one of the first and foremost, you want to pick up that rifle and operate that bolt. So pick it up, move and 
and move the bolt back and forth. Operate that bolt a couple of times. Make sure that there is no grit feeling, which basically you can feel grinding of metal, you know, metal on metal. If it's not a smooth operation and it doesn't move back and forth smoothly and you hear like a crunching or a grinding noise, that's a... Uh, that's not a good sign. That usually means that there's burrs of metal and it's not very polished on the inside and it's not, uh, it wasn't cut very well and, may, you know, it was not, it did not come out of the factory or was not inspected at the factory very well. So I would, if you uh, pick a fire, if you pick your rifle up and you operate the bolt and you, you, it feels gritty or it's hard to operate, it's hard to move the bolt back and forth, that's a bad sign. That is, that's not a good sign as well. Anytime it's hard to operate a bolt action bolt, it you should definitely ask questions about it. So the next thing vi clearly visible in that picture is the safety. You want to operate the safety. Flick that that flick that safety back and forth. Make sure that it moves back and forth freely in its designated spot. There's no grit feeling. There's no it's not really, you know, make sure it's not difficult to push forward and backward. And uh Lastly, you want to see if it works. So, you know, put the put the firearm on safe and go down. Point the firearm in a safe direct, you know, point the rifle in a safe direction. Put your finger on the trigger. Pull the trigger. If it doesn't pull and it's on safe, good. That safety works accordingly. Now push it forward and again, point it in a safe direction and unloaded. Once again, firearm safety 101. Put the safety on fire and pull the trigger make sure it make sure the safety operates correctly now the final thing in that picture we're going to talk about is the firing pin that is the silver uh, cylindrical looking piece in the middle of that bolt make sure when you pull the trigger that firing pin goes down it will depress forward which basically means that firing pin and spring are working correctly it is pushing the firing pin forward to detonate the round inside the chamber if it doesn't move forward there's something wrong now reversely when you fire the when you after you have pulled the trigger and you see the the firing pin go forward you want to again operate the bolt pull the bolt up Pull it to the rear, push it forward, lock it into place, and then look at the firearm. It should look how it looks in this picture. That that firing pin should reset and and be cocked backwards again for the next shot. If it's not the firing pin, the springs that op the spring that operates the firing pin is not working, and you should ask questions once again. If the firearm does not operate properly and the way it should. You need to ask questions. Don't ever be afraid to ask questions. You don't know these people that you're, you know, most of the time you're not going to know where these used firearms come from or their history. A lot of these, a lot of these, uh, these firearms, dearly, move, move lots of these used bolt action rifles. So it's hard for them to get a full history on all of these guns. So my advice to you is to ask questions if something doesn't work correctly like if the firing pin does not reset itself that's a concern because that's money that you're going to have to invest into that gun if you still want it into that firearm if you still want it that you're going to have to invest the money to to either figure out why or fix it so once again you know make sure everything is operational from the rear of that you know while you're looking at the rear of that that firearm now, moving on, we are going to go this direction to this picture up top here. Let me kind of enlarge this picture for you guys a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about a little bit better. So let me enlarge that for you. Now, this is the picture of a bolt that has been removed from the rifle. So when you pull that, when you push the, the button by the trigger, like I uh, mentioned before, you can remove that bolt from the the right from the rifle completely and this is what that looks like now we are looking at the very front of the bolt the bolt face and the two locking lugs that hold that bolt into place first of all you want to inspect those two locking lugs and make sure that there's no damage to them 
Those two in this in that picture look okay. There's no there's a little wear and tear on them. I see a little bit of carbon buildup and some scarring on them, but nothing of too concern for the locking lugs. So that's that passes inspection there. What does not pass inspection is the bolt face. So what I'm talking about that when I say the bolt face is that lip that bumps out and and up on there where the firing that firing pin hole is there's I'm talking about that lip right there as you can see it looks scratched up and marred up and next to one of those bolt uh, lugs it looks like there's a chip or a, a piece of it that is uh, a piece of it that is um, kind of uh, damaged so that is uh, very important if you see that I would I would um, I would probably avoid, uh, advise you to avoid that firearm altogether because the, the, a damaged bolt, a damaged, uh, bolt face can affect what is called headspace. Now headspace is basically how the firearm locks a cartridge into place. So when you push that bolt forward, that bolt picks around, picks your cartridge up inserts it into the chamber, and then it locks behind it. So everything is locked up nice and tight, so when you fire that cartridge, nothing moves. Well, headspace, when, when, with a, a damaged bolt face, the headspace can, can increase, and it's basically going to give that cartridge wiggle room to move around, and that can cause all sorts of pressure problems and operational problems where you cannot you won't be able to fire that cartridge properly or the firearm will not, the bolt will not work properly either. So if you see a damaged bolt face, definitely avoid it. I would, I would advise you to not even, uh, not even waste your money there. So the final picture down here, guys, that we have right here is going to be the length of pull. Now that's a term. If you guys are brand new to firearms, length of pull is as you can see in the picture, it goes from the trigger to the very rear of the stock where you put it against your shoulder. And uh, everybody has their own length of pull. Ask your uh, local dealer to help you measure your own. They're very helpful. They will uh, pick up. They they have a uh, they have a uh, dummy rifle there where you can. They will measure your length of pull off of. And once they give that length of pull to you, remember that. So all of these rifles are are built um, to fit different lengths of pull. Now. One of the questions that I would advise you to ask is, does the rifle come with spacers? Now, spacers are little plastic pieces that you can uh, insert into the back of the stock to either increase or decrease the length of pull on that stock to fit you best. You, you, um, you need to, to, uh, to find a, fire, a rifle that will uh, fit. That's going to fit your length of pull because if it's not in within your length of pull, um, it's not going to be comfortable. It's not going to be comfortable to shoot, and you're not going to be you know you're not going to you're not going to be able to shoot it accurately because you're going to have to constantly adjust your your uh, cheek on the cheek well if it's out of your uh, out of your length of pull. So that would be my advice to you is to. Uh, if you're brand new to this and you don't know your length of pull, ask your local dealer to help you find your length of pull. Now, finally, I would say if your uh, local dealer that you are looking for in the uh, well, you're looking at these this used bolt action rifle at um, allows you or has a shooting range, you should ask them at least ask them. They may not allow you to, but you should at least ask the question. Can I shoot the firearm? Can I physically operate it to see to see if it functions properly? A lot of these dealers will gladly say yes to you. They are not going to avoid a sale for five five rounds. They will let you test the firearm out, and if you want to shoot it, they would glad they would. Most of them will let you shoot the the firearm. So I would advise you to do that. But I hope these little tips and tricks helped you guys uh, 
helped you guys out and you can use them the next time you uh, are in a firearms shop and you see a, a used bolt action rifle for a good price. Once again, guys, please hit that like, subscribe and share if it helped you out. And my name is Bobby. I am the Urban Outlaw and I will catch all of you guys on the next one.